we are taking a look at my fridge as well as pantry just to give you guys an idea of everything I'm eating. And I haven't counted how many foods precisely, but I would guess it's no more than 15 or 20 total. And most of those are seasonings or in sparse amounts. So in reality, the bulk of my diet is only made up of two or three foods. That means I'm getting most of the percentage of my overall calories for the day from a very small amount, which makes it very easy to not have to worry about agrochemical concerns or putting negative things in your body. Granted, it's from a good source. Uh, so let's start real quick with my upstairs refrigerator, which is mostly my parents' and my sister's food. Now, sometimes I'll throw some of my stuff up here, and if I just need to keep it cold for a day or two, uh, this is actually the soup that I've been eating that I cooked in my Instapot, and this is some leftover beef broth, and I also have some bay leaf and thyme that was being used to make uh, that soup. Other than that, all of this is my parents' uh, crap, and if you guys want, I can make a video uh, showing you how uh, the standard American dieter eats because it lines up pretty quickly with nonsense, but what are you gonna do? Freezer, same thing, it's mostly their stuff. I do have uh, some leftover frozen rice that I might or might not eat. I have some frozen sprouted corn tortillas that you know I was having a couple months back, but just a bunch of low quality conventional meat. You know, you think my parents would support me and buy meat from Frankie's Strange Meat, but no, they just buy crap from the grocery store, go figure. So this is that soup we had in the fridge. I just leave it on my counter sometimes when it's left over for a couple hours. It's barley, venison, some seasonings, beef stock, mushroom, and onion. Pretty simple. I think it's about six or seven ingredients total. Uh, here I have some bread pudding I actually made for my family uh, from leftover quality ingredients. We had sourdough bread from the French toast, some eggs, some milk, and sugar. That's all bread pudding really is. Here I have a bunch of water kefir cultures that I may or may not uh, be selling soon. So if you guys need some kefir grains, keep an eye out for that. Uh, but here are my actual kefir fermentations. Uh, so in the back I have one which is coconut sugar and coconut water. I have one which is just sugar and water. And I have some apple juice here that I'm adding to the kefir after it ferments to do a second fermentation. So I'll definitely do a video on water kefir maybe in two or three weeks as it is the bulk of what I'm drinking right now, and it's something that's been crucial for me, you know, really uh, rebalancing my microbiome and getting things in check, especially at times where you can't tolerate other things. You know, sauerkraut isn't that tasty or easy to eat in large quantities, and dairy, yogurt, kefir, a little too expensive right now. So this is part one of my pantry. Uh, there's the coconut sugar and regular sugar that I've been using for the kefir. Uh, here I have some honey that I was planning on using to make uh, some more cookies, which I don't actually have made uh, right now. Salt goes in the cookie, salt goes on food. Uh, we have some coconut oil, some more salt, sweetened condensed coconut milk, which I was putting in the cookies as well. We have the chocolate chips for the cookies. We have the coconut milk for the cookies. And that's really most of what is going into the cookies. Sometimes I will add uh, the nature's glucose, which we have on Frankie's range foods which is a higher glucose percentage, which makes it healthier overall. Certainly not as sweet. This is just some molasses that is needed to start the uh, kefir culture. Some melted coconut oil that goes into the cookies as well. Over here in the dining room is where most of my stuff is. There's just not enough room in the kitchen because my dad buys so much crap and keeps it filled up. Uh, there's some more coconut milk for the cookies. Coconut oil goes both in the cookies as well as in the soup using beef broth as the base right now. I should really make my own, but uh, that brand is okay. The ingredients are decent. The powdered sugar I was actually using for some Oreo cookie filling that I was making a couple months back. Haven't done it in a while. Uh, there's some more chocolate chips, some more chocolate discs that I don't really like that much. Uh, we have some more sugar for the kefir, uh, some dried fruit, some raisins. I think I'm actually gonna switch over to like fruit, raisins, and stuff for a week instead of cookies, see if I sleep a little better even though my sleep's been pretty good. Here I have uh, some grains. So this is barley, some more barley that I've been using as the base of the soup right now. A lot of barley, actually. I have some high quality pasta. That's what we were eating a few months back. We have some flour for the cookies, uh, some kelp kombu that I was putting in the soup, but it kind of breaks up and it's hard to take out of the soup, so I didn't use it again. And underneath there is just some brown and white rice that I have not been consuming lately. Uh, so all the grains that I've eaten in reality, rice, brown rice, pasta, 
flour, and barley. That's been the base of the calories of my diet so far. And then there we have uh, some whey protein that I'll add occasionally uh, to my sister's food. And some of these cocoa melts, which I haven't had in probably, a, I would say, two or three months now. I was craving them and then I stopped eating them. I'll, I guess I'll give them to my sister as a snack or something. But that's most of my food. That's most of my diet. Uh, not really a lot of food. It's basically the soup and cookie diet right now. Soon it'll be the soup and fruit diet. So let's go downstairs to the other refrigerator. Ah, my juicer has arrived. So I bought a juicer that I can use to juice some apples so I can do fresh raw kefir for myself and maybe for you guys as well. We'll see what happens. I'll see how easy it is. So I don't have much in my fridge down here, mainly because I just grab stuff from Frankie's syringe meat whenever I need it. I actually just ran out of venison today, uh, but I'm probably going to be doing uh, veal for the next few weeks. Uh, this is just some lemon, some limes, and some ginger that I put in the water kefir to add some flavor to it. Uh, here I have actually some caviar from Frankie's Syrian Age Meat that I'll have you know, once or twice a month for some omega-3s. Uh, these are just some onions uh, for the soup. I have some Wagyu steaks back here in case I forget to make soup. Uh, this Wagyu sirloin is actually only about $6 on Frankie's Syrian Age Meat right now. If you guys want to try it out, we also have some chuck steaks that have pretty high marbling and are really, really delicious, especially for the price point. Uh, but that's really all that's in the fridge over here. Now, in the freezer, I have the veal that I've been eating. This is the top round. You know, one of these will last me, you know, more than a week. And it's only like 60 or 70 bucks, I think, on Frankie's free range meat right now. Super delicious, super affordable. I have some more of the sprouted corn tortillas down here, just a little bit of disorganization. Uh, some frozen pineapple that I might use for a smoothie. Here we have some beef testicles, but I have the freeze dried stuff now. And then the rest of the stuff I believe is just for my sister. So I have some French fries, some pizza, nothing for myself really. Uh, for some reason, my dad threw my supplements down here. That's something I didn't show you guys. I do take these minerals and these vitamins on a consistent basis. And I'm gonna try doing some of the beef powders more often now. You can check out organsupplements.com. I do have a box of Nature's Glucose over here. So, you know, I've been going through this stuff, Nature's Glucose, I'm going through a lot of it myself. Almost forgot to show you guys the water I'm currently drinking. So this is Saratoga. Usually get the still water from a local restaurant supplier. And this is specific to New York, I believe. You might be able to find it in other places. There's a couple good brands in the store, but even with you know, a reverse osmosis filter in New York, I don't wanna be drinking the water out of the tap because of all the chemicals and pollutants in it. Uh, sometimes I do get Gerolsteiner, especially when I want a higher calcium water. And I'll actually talk about that in the video I do tomorrow on minerals. But you know, it's not too expensive per week and I feel a lot better when I drink it. I use this for everything. I use this for the water kefir, Whatever I'm making, if it's going into my body, it's gonna be a high quality glass bottled water. So that's all I'm eating right now. It might actually seem like a lot, but usually you know, when people do these day of eating videos, you just see what they eat in a day. I would guess the majority of people are consuming ingredients from at least 100, 200 different sources. You imagine if you go to just one restaurant or one fast food place every week, that one food is gonna have more ingredients than I eat in general. So by reducing the amount of ingredients in your diet, by increasing the quality, you know, we can really have a minimally inflammatory way of living. And you know, I'm hoping in the next, I would say year or two, I'm back to feeling 100% and normal, you know, recovering from the liver damage of the previous imbalanced diet. And you know, maybe fixing my diet a little more will help that, but I mean, I've tried just about everything. And, you know, when you have elevated liver enzymes, which I don't anymore, but if you actually got to the point where you had scar tissue damage in your liver, it does take quite a while to heal and recover. And a lot of what I'm eating and what I'm doing, uh, particularly in the supplement regimen, is conducive to that. So I'm keeping the diet as minimally inflammatory as possible. I'm supplementing things that'll help heal my liver, you know, specifically B vitamins, minerals like selenium, and I'm hoping you know, my liver can heal itself over that period of time, two, three years. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. If you have any questions about what I'm eating, why I'm eating it, leave them down below. Maybe I can do a video on why I eat some grains in the future, but for the most part, it's a blank slate and it kind of ties in with natural accessibility. 
Uh, so thanks again for joining me today, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video. Uh, you can go to frank-defano.com uh, to check out everything from Frankie's Range Meat, organ supplements, all of my businesses. Thank you.